when he's in a new environment or when we're walking, like it, this is this is like a constant thing. Like he's just he's smelling okay. everything. Like so, every... we're starting from scratch. Right. Cool. All right, let's bring him back in. Milo, sit. Just doesn't doesn't really care what's going on. So why don't you guys just start off by telling me the things you really want to work on, the things you've been struggling with, and or also the training you've already done. We, we got him at eight weeks. We've had him since he was a puppy. We kind of just did like the basic commands and tried to work on like heel and kind of staying with us like on the leash, but he's, he's kind of reactive, not in like an aggressive manner, but if he sees someone, he's like, hey, I really want to go talk to them. And he like, he'll, you know, bark once or something, but he's kind of intimidating because he's, you know, a larger dog. Mm -hmm. We can't like train it out of him. We did get him a Herm Springer after like watching a ton of your videos and everything. Cool. I think I made the mistake. I introduced it to him after he spent the day at daycare. Mm -hmm. And he's tired. like, he, yeah, he was tired. And like now he like hears the thing and he's like, oh God, like I'm going to go lay down. Like mm. I, I messed up kind of thing. When I introduced him to it, I was like, you know, let's go for a walk. Like wasn't being aggressive with it or anything like right. that. I think he looks at it more of a punishment. You know, it's more of like a, you know, don't walk us kind of thing. Because yeah. um, like with her, like he's very protective over her. If he sees another dog or something that he's intimidated by, like he will like stay by her side, but sometimes he'll also shoot towards that dog and like literally just turn her into a kite. Mm. I think it's more of like a like a respect thing. Like he doesn't look to us like we're, you know, kind of above him, like we're telling him what to do. Mm -hmm. um, it's more of like, you know, you're gonna do what Milo wants when he wants to kind of thing. It sounds to me like it's a it's a reinforcement thing. Like he may know, well, we're gonna figure it out, but um, we, gotta, we gotta make sure he knows the things that we're asking him to do, right? Yeah. Like you said, like with the recall, he may know what it is, but if he doesn't do it, then you're kind of screwed. So right. then he's very opportunistic and he'll try to figure out when, and a lot of dog owners have that problem, is they're like, no, my dog, <laughs> my dog knows it. <laughs> but how, how responsive they are right. depending on the environment is up to them, which then it comes directly down to reinforcement. Like if your dog isn't, if your dog knows a behavior but completely blows you off, the answer is your reinforcement. What are you guys going to do about it when he decides to say, I'm not, I hear you, I'm not doing it. Right. And I think that that's just the, the ecosystem in the world that we live in is if there's not direct, clear, concise consequences of action, running stop signs, drinking coffee when it's too hot, uh, whatever, right? There's, there's, if there's not some sort of, th you're going to do it if right. there's, if, if it's beneficial for you, right? Right. Where it's right. like, if I just don't have consequences for this and I want to do it, why wouldn't I do it? Right. All right, you guys, I wanted to let you know, we are doing a really, really, really cool giveaway on the members club. I'm actually going to pick two people this month and at the end of next month, to fly to their house and train their dog for a day. All you guys have to do to simply enter to win is be part of the members club. That's all you have to do, links in the description below. What I wanna do right now is create some structure. So we're kind of starting from scratch. Okay. Um, is, is he food motivated? What is he like? Not really food Not motivated. Not like, okay, perfect. Um, like he, he will take treats, but like that's another thing with the prong collar is like when that thing is on, like treats, like he won't even put them in his mouth. Okay. Um, Okay, we're gonna start off with a slip. The reason is, is because I wanna be uh, really efficient. I wanna work fast. Okay. Um, there's no sense of me teaching you how to handle him on a flat collar for two reasons. A, because the reality is, is when you go outside and there's a distraction, it's gone. Right. I can teach you how to handle him in here and kind of guideline him through, through through here with the flat, but realistically- It doesn't give any reinforcement. To there's, no, there's no action to it. As soon as he decides to say, yeah, but squirrel, you're hanging on. Mm -hmm. So this has action. Okay. Um, so we're gonna start off with this. Milo, come here, buddy. You can give him a little break. Yes, yeah, a good boy. Come here, buddy. Okay. Come here. Yeah. Oh, Down. hey, buddy. He looks like a little bear. Hey, buddy. Good boy. Okay. So we're going to go over a little calibration here. So we're going to come out. Milo, come. Good boy. Good. Come. Oh, good. A little bit of pressure there. Come. Yes, buddy. Oh, good boy. Milo, come. So that little pop there is like, hey. He's yeah. never had that, right, really right. effectively. So that's why he's, he'll tune up really nicely. It should be fun. It should be a good, safe learning environment. But as soon as maybe they do something wrong, there's got to be somebody to say, hey, that's not okay, right? Or, hey, that's wrong. So that's kind of what we're doing is we're making a fun, fair learning environment for him. When you're on the leash with him, it's his show. 
right. and you're just kind of hanging on. Right. So I'm gonna do this one more time and then you're gonna do it. But essentially what you wanna do is say, hey, come over here. Hey, come over here. So we talked about earlier, he's a working dog. He, he needs a job, every dog does. I don't care if it's a German Shepherd or it's a Chihuahua, they need something to do. If you don't give an animal a job, then they find jobs themselves. Right. Pulling sneakers out, chewing on the furniture, barking, pacing, whining, get, what do I do, what do I do, what do I do, what do I do? And the more of a working dog you have, the more of a problem it is, and the more of responsibility you have. Mm -hmm. Like that guy right there, right? That's a working line Malinois that constantly needs something to do. That's why if he's not working, he's either laying down, waiting for the next thing, or he's pacing. So all we're doing right now is a tune-up or an engagement or an encalibration, however you want to say it. And I'm just, hey, I'm going this way. Hey, I'm going this way. So the, for the first time, he's like, I'm working with you, not against you. Milo, come. Yes, buddy. Good job. Sit. Nice. Oh, good boy. Okay, break. And now the break is his break. Okay, he can do what he wants. I always talk about a micro macro, little big. Micro is he's going to learn how to walk nicer on a leash. The cool thing is, Overall, he'll be happier. He'll be more confident. He'll have more direction. He'll be less stressed. He'll, he'll lay down more often. He'll just say, hey, let me know what you want me to do. Right now, he's kind of, it's a free for all. Right. He's on vacation all the time. Well, come. Good. Now put your arm down. Good. Come. Good, come. Good, come. Good. 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 Same thing, just go the well, other come. way. Come. Good. And just put your leash down again, just nice and relax. I just want you to get in the habit of just relaxing. Instead with the of leash. like holding tension right. on it. You're so used to hanging on. So that's why you're always gonna be up here, but you have to remember whenever we're doing pressure, it doesn't like if I came over and started pushing you, you're gonna go this way. Right. And this way, right? You're gonna you're gonna go with the flow, right? Just like horsemanship. If we're if we're doing this, we want the horse to, to do something. It's, it's a pressure release system. So when he's doing what we want him to do, that leash is just dead absolutely dead. He's just nice and relaxed. A lot of people make the mistake that when they're handling and they're trying to teach a dog a new behavior and teach them what's right, is we say, hey, let's do this. And the pressure's already halfway on. So you're already telling them, hey, you're making a mistake, I think, uh, but I also want you to do something. So when you're handling him, good boy, come, yes, good boy. And you just release that pressure. It's a very clear way for animals to understand if they're doing something right or they're doing something wrong. But if you're walking around with it halfway or all the way up, He's not gonna know the difference between doing it right or wrong. Come. Good come, bud. Come. Good boy. Good. Milo, come. Good. Good. Now just walk back towards us. Milo, come. There, perfect. Pop again. Perfect. Well done. That was a really good pop. Do it one more time without getting dizzy. If you can. Milo, come. Good. And then when you're done, you just face us and just, yep. And then you can just, so there, that, that's the accountability you want to work right. with. So if you ask him to sit, follow through with it. So correct him. Milo, sit. Good. So he knows it. Ah, accountability. The reason why he won't sit for you is simply because when you've asked him to do something or you, if he doesn't do it, he doesn't do it. Right. There's no repercussions. So it's important that when you ask a dog to do, like you told him to sit and he's like, yeah, but there's a dog. Micro <laughs> macro, right? Micro is he's not sitting. The bigger picture is, is you asked him to do something that he knows and he said this. Right. That's not <laughs> good. Because when he sees a squirrel and he sees a chipmunk and he sees other things, you're going to say heel. He's like, I don't listen to you. You have to make sure that the, the little things of sitting when I asked you to sit holds him accountable. It, it predicates your entire relationship with the dog. If you ask him to do something and he just flips you off, that's your life. Right. So that's why when I came over and I said sit, he looked at me and said, oh, okay. So two things. Don't ask him to sit unless you really want him to sit. Like if he got up right now, I would stop talking to you and I'd put him back into a sit. Because mm -hmm. you don't want to just do something just to dilute it. Right. Or, or be, to be honest, I think a lot of people do it because they don't know what else to do. It's a nervous thing. Like when I'm sitting there talking, they're like SIT, SIT, SIT. And the dog's up, up, up. Well, if you ask your dog to sit and they constantly get up, you're throwing your relationship out again. Right, you so, don't want to say the command a bunch of times. You want to- Mean it. Yeah. When you say it, mean it, right? right. Like it, when we say heal, it's heal. When we say sit, it's sit. But there was a perfect example of why, the reason why you are where you are is right there. So now we're gonna start talking about marking behaviors, teaching him, hey, this is what heel is. This is what break is. Right now he doesn't know what anything is really. So he doesn't know what to do. That's why you're gonna see him do stuff like this. It's gonna be a good cop, bad cop scenario here. So what I want you to do is, here, let me show him really quick. So we're gonna start with some healing. Come here, buddy, it's okay. We're gonna start with some healing exercises. 
All we're gonna do is say his name, and then we're gonna ask him to heal. The heal is right here, at your left side. Milo, heal. Good heal. Heal. Good heal, buddy. Left side, one arm. Heal. He's on my left side. I'm just gonna use my leash to kind of guide him, turning this way. I'm gonna do an outside turn. Milo, heal. Better. So all that's good still. That wasn't smooth because he just doesn't know how to move with me yet. Right. Heal. Good. Heal. Good. Milo, sit. Good job. Break. Milo, heal. There you go. Good heal. And then go back that way. Heal. Good. And then do an inside turn right towards him. Heal. There you go. Now just keep walking forward. Good heal. Now go back towards me and then just slow down heal. and look at me. Good. Good. Milo, sit. Sit. Good sit. Good. And then give him a break. Break. Okay, buddy, break. When you guys are handling and you're coming out, say you move Good forward boy. this way. Good boy. When you turn, don't correct the dog if they're turning with you. Leave it. So that's where you can like pull, like here, see. I look up. Good. Did you guys see that? Perfect example. He started to build. You can hear him. <sighs> he started to build because there was a dog walking by. That's where, well, come, good boy, nice, boom, that's it. Takes two seconds. So what I don't want you to do is when you guys turn, don't correct the dog as you're turning. Only give them pressure if they don't do what you ask. So when you turn, it's not an immediate correction. You come out, you say, hey dog, heal. You kind of wait a second. If they don't get to you, that's where you give them just a little bit of pressure. So don't get in the habit of correcting and asking at the same time, because it's not fair. Nice. See how that's better? So you guys look at, look at the shoulders, look where he's paying attention, look what the dog's doing. Perfect, now stop. A lot of people will ask me, how long should you be healing? Should your dog be healing the whole time? And it's, it's really up to you. You don't want the dog to heal the whole time. I think that that's unrealistic, especially right. for a new dog learning a new behavior. So what I typically do is have monuments so we're gonna start on this place bed and I'm gonna put the other Milo, place come. bed over here. Good boy. And we're gonna keep pushing the place bed out. Heel from A to B, break. A to B, break. And keep that dura the duration and distance. There's three Ds, distance, distraction, and duration. Something I've been saying for years now and it's, it's pretty much the application of any obedience that you're doing is gonna have those three things be a part of it. So I'm just gonna heel from here to there and then break. This is like your test, okay? Milo, heel. Good heel. Ah, good heel, buddy. I'm gonna go around. I'm gonna stop here. Okay, break. Good. So we usually use cones, but I don't wanna go grab them, so okay. I'll have you guys do it. My little heel. Heel. Good heel. Good heel, bud. Good heel, nice. And when you get back to this one, you can break. Break. Good. Good place. Good, and then just back up, and then we'll start proofing this out a little bit. Start moving around, you can, yep, yep, just like that. Now you're gonna use your body pressure and your verbal pressure. So if he gets up, ah, 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 ah. So there's two different pressures going on to him. Verbal and then body. Wait, ah, wait, wait. So give him body pressure now. Like, so if you, if you came up here, place, boom, done. So give okay, him. So come back a little bit. Body pressure and verbal pressure. Just like I was just saying, as soon as he starts to move, use both of them. The quicker you shut that down, the more he'll, he'll like right now he's, he's, you're giving him an inch, he's taking a mile. Right. Shut it down immediately and he'll, he won't do that as much. Milo. Place. 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 Good place. Good now, place. let's Wait. just go pretty much back to the chairs here, and then we'll go and then we'll break them. If he fails over and over again, you gotta teach him what you really wanna do. There, and I think that would be like your threshold. Good weight. Good weight. And then you go up, grab the leash, and then break them. 
Freak. Freak. Nice job. Yeah. Good. Good, Good. We'll give him a little break on that. My little police. Wait. Okay, break. So, you see how that pep kind of, yeah. oh, okay, this isn't so bad. Because yeah. I think before it was like, work, work, work. yeah. And that's normal because people are in, like I said, in fix it mode. Yeah. What am I doing wrong? I don't want to mess up. He's had a year and a half of like being a puppy kind of thing. Yeah. And now it's serious and he's like, well, this sucks. <laughs> but you want to make it fun. It's a natural thing for him to go, well, this sucks. But then when you're like, hey, man, let's go, it's going to be fun. Yeah. Heel, buddy. Good heel. Me? I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Click here to subscribe to my channels to see more videos just like this.